Not everyone wants to show their ankles in the fall and winter. Because <laughs> showing your ankles means you shaved your legs. No judgment. Howdy y'all, my name is Gretchen and I am the Restless Thrifter, bringing you a thrift haul from the Dallas Bins. And the Dallas Bins have gone through a little bit of a transformation. They have opened up part of the warehouse to allow for more bins, so there's more clothing. And they seem to turn things over a little more frequently than they used to. I had only been once before, so I am not the best judge. I just know that it has more <laughs> and turns over more frequently. I am from Denver, and so I'm used to some really good bins. And I was quite surprised actually that Dallas didn't have better bins because I know Dallas has good stuff. Like there's better stuff in Dallas um, than there is in Denver, unless you're looking for outdoorsy stuff. Um, but now I love them both. And so I have been to the Dallas bins twice in the last couple of weeks. And I'm here to show you one of those hauls. I may start into the second haul, depending on how quickly this one goes. Let me tell you my average cost of goods for that day at the bin so that you'll have an idea. I spent 80 cents per piece, which is awesome. And here is a sneak peek of something I picked up, this beautiful pink dress behind me. It's vintage, and I believe it was probably for a quinceanera, which is a girl's 15th birthday. And um, the girls wear these beautiful full dresses. I actually have a petticoat underneath there to help fluff out the skirt. Some. I don't know if someone would want it for a modern quinceanera because it is a little dated, but it's gorgeous and it does have some condition issues. So mainly some spots that I want to treat and I'm going to try to get every single little spot out. It all looked like surface stuff that got on there from the bins themselves, but I am actually just diving right in, aren't I? Um, I am a part-time reseller and a part-time caregiver these days. My mom is actually in hospice and I have moved to Texas. I moved my reselling business from Denver to the Dallas area to help care for her during this time. And so I don't get as much reselling work done as I would if I were full-time. So I don't say I'm full-time, even though I'm not doing anything else to earn an income than this um, at this moment but I am here taking care of my mom. And I've referenced that, you know, that I'm caring for family, but I've never really mentioned that. So, you know, I am a bit sensitive to it, um, obviously. And I've been here for quite a few months now. Um, and, you know, it's, without getting too personal, it is a blessing, really. It is a privilege to be able to take care of her at this time. So she's napping right now. And so I'm going to shoot this video and show you what I have. You'll see some frequent interruptions. You'll hear Winnie dogs and my father in the background. It's all life, right? So back to this dress. I don't know what I'm going to get for it. Um, you'll see me looking down at my computer pretty frequently. I'll be doing a little research while I'm doing this video. Um, I looked up pink quinceanera dresses and solds for those are really all over the place, but those are for modern ones. When I looked up vintage, I didn't really see anything. Um, so, I mean, I'm looking at, you know, a lot of auctions really. So maybe I'll do an auction. This would also make a gorgeous Halloween costume, right? This could be a beautiful Cinderella dress or Sleeping Beauty or any sort of princess. It's just beautiful. Let me turn it around and show you. Just come on over, Gabby. This is Gabby. She's my smaller bottle. Look at all that beading and these poofy sleeves. And look at this back, open back. This tells me it's possibly 80s, just with the way it's beaded and everything. Um, it was listed at 375 wherever it was sold. And the brand is just Lily Bridal, made in Taiwan, 100% polyester. Um, but yeah, I think it's, I think it's gorgeous. I'm gonna work on some of these beads. I think they're tangled up. So I'll have to figure that out. 
And I don't know if you can see this back, but it's like, a, let me hold her up. You'll see some of the staining I'm talking about. It's a waterfall tiered skirt. It's just beautiful. And here's some of the staining. And this dress was in a bin. Some girl pulled it out and fluffed it out, laid it down, looked at it, and then threw it back. And I <laughs> hightailed it over there. Okay, so this next item is also a little funky, a little vintage. It is a Fuda International 100% silk bomber jacket. And it's got tigers on it, so I had to get it. I love a funky print like this. Let me see if you can get a better shot of a tiger. Well, he's upside down back here. But I just liked it. Um, it is a little bit quilted great condition and I see an ASP of $19 for this and I saw similar sold for anywhere from 10 to 30 so I'm gonna shoot for $20 I'll probably list it for 30 and then shoot for 20 okay next item is one of those things that and I promise not everything is vintage and funky but um, but most probably is this is a casual corner casual corner, which, you know, is vintage because I don't think this store is around anymore. The color's coming out a little bit weird, but it is a somewhere between an olive and a chartreuse green. And this is um, just a really cool wool blend tweed blazer. Um, maybe I could pass this for dark academia, but I think this might be a little too funky even for that. Um, ASP was around $15 for this. Sell-through rate was really low at 3%, but it is selling. Okay, this next item is also a bit different. It's a new with tag Dickies Chef's Coat. Dickies, there's the label. Size medium, I do believe this is unisex, but if I had to pick one, I would pick men's. The buttons are on the right, and just because of the sizing of it. And it didn't seem to have any stains. Miracle for white in the bins. So that's awesome. And I think I can probably get 10 to $15 for it. The ASP was 12. Sell through rate was 17.32. So that's not too bad. All right, this blouse is 100% um, silk. And I know it's silk, but it doesn't have a care tag or a size. But I also know it's plus size because it's Liz Claiborne Woman. And I think it's a one or two X. I will try it on and do my best to estimate. Um, I should hold it still. I noticed that I do not hold still a lot, but it's got these cute travel pictures, postcards. It looks like maybe the Arc de Triomphe there and a cafe. I can't really tell what the other things are but I'll do my best and um, I'll put travel and postcards um, and novelty print in the title. I did find another postcard blouse that sold on eBay for $20 through a best offer. And I know what it sold for because I went into Terapeak and I found it there. So I did see what the sale price was there. This item is a gray blouse by Lane Bryant. It is an older label, I believe. It's a size 1820 and it's got this metal hardware on the pockets. It's button up, long sleeve, just a good career wear blouse or really you could wear this casually as well in the plus size. And I saw Lane Bryant tops anywhere between 15 and 20. Usually it has a ASP of $13 with a sell through rate of 6%. And I do sell a lot of plus size. That is my specialty. Next, we have a pair of plus size pants, Talbots, 18 women's, that's what the W stands for, wide leg crop chino. And it's a really great color for fall. It's a rusty orangey brown. It looks a little bit more, it looks a little darker in person, I would say. The ring light is washing it out, but just really great condition. And I think I can get close to 20 for these, even though the ASP is $12 with the sell-through rate of 17%. I think I can get a little bit more 
And here we have a Harley Davidson. Let me zip it up. It'll be a little easier to tell. I have a blinged out space dye hoodie sweatshirt with some lace detail. I don't know if you can see the sparkles. And it was a real, really great shape. I do think it's um, maybe more of a Y2K style. We like to bling things out, didn't we? And here's the label, but you never know. You really don't. Um, the ASP for used Harley Davidson zip up hoodies is $28 in Terapeak, sell through rate of 27%. So that's really good. This, believe it or not, does not match that casual corner jacket. It is a bit different green and different tweed, and it's a different brand. This is Ann Taylor Loft, size six. And I typically only pick up Loft in the bins or I will pick up Loft Plus pretty much anywhere um, for the right price because it sells pretty quickly and I like their plus size clothing. This is just a real cute, I could probably get away with Dark Academia on this one more so than the other. I also may take this into a consignment store that I've been using locally because I do have a hard time selling regular sized loft clothing, but the ASP is about $12, low sell through rate of 1% on loft tweed skirts. This next item is apparently a Target brand, which just goes to show I haven't been to Target or any store, retail store in a long time. It's Grayson Threads and it's an extra large and it's really soft and I wanted to keep it for myself, but I did see that it had a good sell through rate of 26% and it um, had good comps from 15 to $25. So now's a good time to talk about sell through rate. A lot of you might say, ooh, a 26% sell through rate is not good, but that's because sell through rate caps at 100% and does not go over. So. It's actually really good to get anywhere above 25%. 50% awesome. Anything above that is amazing, in my opinion. But calculating sell-through rate is not just my opinion. There's an actual calculation, and you have to include the amount that is sold within the denominator. So I'm going to put it up right here, pause on it for a little bit, absorb it. This is the accurate way to do it. Now, if you want to exclude the items that have sold to make it easier for you to do math, that is fine. Just know that 100% is really 50% and 200%, I don't even know, I can't even do, I, I, I can't figure out fake math, but just finding something that has comps is good. That's a good starting point. And if it has more solds than listed, then it's 50% or greater, so that's good. All right, I'm not gonna even bother looking at sell through rate or comps right now on this item because it's just a new with tag, Jackson Hole, traveler, visitor, um, tourist tote bag. I don't know, I think anyone who lives there would also like it. Um, it's just really cute and you can tell it's hand painted. Okay, so just one more thing. It's by Art Studio Company. And it says Jackson Hole, Downtown Buffalo, and Gondola Shopper Tote. So I'll probably start it at 30. This is a vintage, I guess it could be a crib bedspread coverlet. And it's so cute. It's got all this mother goose nursery rhymes on it. There she is, the mother of geese herself. That's Mary, right? Had a little lamb. That's, is that Peter Peter Pumpkin Eater? I just don't know. Jack and his candlestick. Those are cats. Cats with mittens and hats. I don't know, I'll have to look that one up. I don't remember that one. And then of course, Humpty Dumpty. It's in great shape, no tags or anything on it, but I had to rescue it. And I knew that if I didn't rescue it, my friend Jan was, was surely gonna rescue it because is too cute. Um, she recommended that I put this on Etsy. So I'm gonna reopen my Etsy shop for fourth quarter. I put my first listing out there yesterday. It was a, I hauled it before, it's a vintage mouse bride. She's so cute. 
someone needs her for their Halloween decor. I used to sell on Etsy, but I didn't like the monthly fees regardless, so I may just keep it open for fourth quarter and see how it goes. Okay, so these next couple of pieces are vintage, military, this is Navy, um, US Navy, not the color Navy. <laughs> this is the color white, US Navy official uniform, and uh, I, it's gotta be vintage, just looking at it. I think this would make a great Halloween costume, especially since Top Gun re-released this year. Here is the top that goes to it, the shirt. It is a men's, could be unisex. The buttons are on the right. And it's got this patch as well as Fletracen. Lead trace. It's F L E T R A C E N. I don't know what that means. Let's Google it. Oh, so apparently it's the U.S. Navy Fleet Training Center. Fleet Training Center. I get it. Fleet Tracen, Norfolk, Virginia, or San Diego. So that Halloween um, or costumey type stuff. I want to get listed pretty quickly here. That dress, this navy uniform, and then also these navy pants. Um, these could be worn for fashion though too, in my opinion. Here is the label on it. And it's a size 29 long. Some tall, thin person can wear these bell bottom. It's got these buttons on the waist, high waist. So you see how, you know, these could be considered fashion. They are pretty thick and itchy, in my opinion. I also lace up the back. I don't know what I'll get for either one of these things. I'll have to do a little bit more research on them. Sticking sort of with the Navy theme, but not really, is this Captain Trucker Cap. Snapback, vintage hat. Here's the tag. It says Seagull, one size fits all, made in Taiwan. It's in really good shape. Similar hats had a $21 ASP and 11% sell through rate. All right, I'm gonna try to show you something that was made in this um, decade. <laughs> this is a V-neck, Brandy Melville. I believe Brandy Mel Melville is one size fits some people and not others, you know, so that's not a real inclusive brand <laughs> in my opinion, but it's just a V-neck gray cable knit pattern sweater. I found the same one with a sold of $12.90 and looking in Terapeak, they had an ASP of $15.44 with a sell-through rate of 11%. So, so I gotta admit, I bought this for myself. Super Grover. It is so soft, it has holes. I'm gonna look it up, but I don't think I could sell it with those holes. So I'm probably just gonna use it as a sleep shirt for myself, but I had to save Super Grover. Ack, here's another one I need to get listed. Quick, quick, quick. It is a child's Disney Lilo and Stitch. So that Stitch flip sequin pumpkin. Let's see what it looks like with the other side. And um, they're not really flip. I just made that assumption. Could you? Yeah, I guess you could. Yeah, it's a flip sequin. Pumpkin, jack-o'-lantern, long sleeve gray, Really nice, soft shirt. It's a size extra large, 14, 16 girls. I did see a couple of new with tags that sold for 10 to $16, um, but none used on eBay. I'll look elsewhere as well. Here's another pair of Talbots plus size pants. These are red, stating the obvious, 18 WP. So they are women's petite. Perfect skimmer. And they do have this little bit of elastic in the waistband, not fully elastic. 
This style has an ASP of $13.81 with a sell-through rate of almost 16%. It's not too bad. This is a Neiman Marcus Nano Cashmere Sweater and a light gray, heathered gray, long sleeve. It is a men's. We call that quarter zip or half zip, third zip. <laughs> Really soft cashmere in the bins. I didn't see any holes, but I'll be inspecting it really closely. Um, ASP of $26 with a sell-through rate of 60%. That's awesome. Okay, next item belonged to Shirley. <laughs> Do people name their kids Shirley anymore? I kinda like it, Shirley Temple. Rails, size large, linen blend, plaid, pastel, pastel pastel, I don't know, I feel like I said that weird, button up top, pretty pastels. And I looked up Rails button linen, linen in tops. Um, let me change the condition filter to pre-owned. And that's quite a few sold, um, 132 sold, $26 ASP, 13% sell through rate. And I do round up on these sell through rates and ASP sometimes, 26.08 and 12.64. This is a pair of pants by Lisset. I have a white pair, I still need to list, but I'm not in a huge hurry. This is an extra large and it's a pair of black pull-on pants. Really nice soft fabric, great condition. I would describe it as, I always say very good, but I, I would call this excellent. I'm just nervous about saying anything is excellent. So I usually say very good. And then if it has just minor, minor, tiny little bitty flaws, I'll say good. And if it has anything major, I'll just say pre-owned condition. Um, so that's kind of my guide. I don't know what other people do. Used Lisse black pull-on pants have an ASP of about $18 with a sell-through rate of 9.41%. Okay, the next item. Who remembers these guys? Legs, eggs. This one's sheer energy. This one's sheer elegance. Um, and they are the colors. Colors, so this one's cream. This one's like a burgundy. Yep, that's what it says. And this one has some damage on the package, but I looked up the sell through rate is 11% uh, ASP is about $12. When I looked at the comps, it looks like a best offer was accepted for um, a couple of white pairs. It makes it look better at 18 or $20, but I'll lot them together and see what I can get. I've been picking up pantyhose lately and I sold one pair overnight. Another pair of pantyhose speaking of this is West Loop Lace Top Thigh High Sheer Toe in black. And I've never heard of this brand before, but it does have a sell through rate of 21% with an ASP of $10. So and it looks like most of those are for single or double lots. Okay, next is a pair of panties. And if these hadn't been new in package, not just new with tags, the new in package. I don't know if I'd pick up some panties out of the bins, but they are Soma Traveler High Leg Pale Sand XXL. They retail for $15. I don't know if they make this style anymore and I'm hoping they don't so that they'd be more likely to sell. I didn't really see any on eBay, but I did see that Poshmark had a couple of pairs in this exact color and style um, sold for $10. So that's you know, that's decent. Okay, next item. I did not find much about this at all, anything, um, or this brand. I found one other thing listed, but goodness, how gorgeous is that? It's got this beautiful teal and orange horse print. I don't know if it's silk. It doesn't say, but it does say valet, Joulel Paris on it. And I just found one other scarf listed for $35, but on sale for $29.75. It says 1960s Italian silk scarf. And it's in similar colors, but a totally different pattern. My pattern's cooler. 
and hmm, that smells like old lady, you know, like perfume. Another scarf, this one has a marking on it somewhere. Maybe the same lady owned this because this is another equestrian theme. And there's, don't ask me to say that. I think it says Spanish writing school um, in German, maybe. Maybe. And look how cool this equestrian print. I got it backwards, doesn't matter. And again, doesn't say silk on it anywhere, but I'm pretty sure it is. It's got a little pinhole. I bet that's where she um, pinned it with a brooch, a literal pinhole. And I didn't find anything on that either. This does say it's silk. It says 100% silk, made in Korea, vintage, scarf. And in one of my videos, I tried very hard to fold up a scarf and put it around my head. Um, real cute. And I did not succeed. But I think you know what I mean, right? like very 60s. Oh, that looks good with my hair. If I wore accessories, I might keep it. Maybe I'll try. Yeah, same lady's perfume. I think all of those belong to her. I like to invent those stories in my mind. I have one more bag of stuff after this, but it has very few things in it. This is a Disney Wonderful World of Knowledge book obviously and oh, look at the illustrations Danbury Press copyright 1973 and it's just got great info to be honest um wonderful world of knowledge it has a lot of great knowledge about animals this one is about this is number one in a series. And I did see that if you had a whole series or several books, they did pretty good. I don't know about a single book. I'll probably list it for 10. Maybe someone's looking for number one in the series. It's in great shape, except for somebody wrote 22 on the front. I'll see if I can erase it, but it does look like it's an ink pen. Next item is a Levi's brand new looking genuine leather black belt in a size 36 speed round and I'm going to throw up comps later I'll look them up later because I'm hungry this is a brand new Amanda Blue instant scrapbook which means it has the pages already laid out and decorated for you and you can add things if you want, or you can just add your pictures. But some mom does not have time to be doing all this scrapbooking herself and will appreciate. I tend to only pick up books in the bins because I don't really know much about them, but I see them in a bin and it makes me sad. Who's scared of her? Who is scared of this child? I don't think she really likes kindergarten. Um, this is a little golden book. Um, it was copyright 1965, but it was printed in 77. She was too scary not to. I mean, that's a Halloween thing right there. Speaking of Halloween, Gus and the baby ghost. So cute. This one does have an inscription and it's got a copyright of 1972. And it's got great illustrations, maybe colored pencil sketches. Colorful. Vintage coloring book, Buffy and Jody. Oh my God, look at those little brats running away. That's what it looks like. I don't know. There's probably supposed to be cute little kids and I immediately think brats. Someone has colored in some pages by Judith, 1970. And I, if I can't sell it, I will for sure keep it in color in it myself. But most of the pages are uncolored and it's in great shape. 
1969. This is a Mighty Magnets construction set. I'm pretty sure these are the kind of magnets that people don't want their children swallowing. Um, 75 pieces have not been taken out of their box that I can tell. Star Wars Jedi Academy book. It, um, I think is the first in the series. It's not been cracked open. The spine is, you know, still fresh, so I don't want to open it up. These little guys I'll take out of their packaging to list, but cute little wooden Easter ornaments. This is a crafty thing. 100 watt soldering iron, like for making stained glass. And it is open, um, damaged box. It retailed for $59.99 at Hobby Lobby whenever this was sold. And I don't think it has like the attachments, so I'm not sure how much I can get for it, but I figured I can get something for parts or as a replacement. Last item, it's a pretty cool one too. Let's scoot in. Um, this is a United States flag. And it is um, a flag that was flown in a jet in honor of somebody. And based on the number 75 EFS flag fly request form, and I won't take the flag out, but you can see that it is a new flag. It's not like it was flown on a flagpole. It was flown in a jet. And here is the certificate. United States Air Force, American flag flown in the skies of Afghanistan on a combat mission aboard the feared A-10C Warthog assigned to the 75th Expeditionary Fighter Squadron, Kandahar Air Base, Afghanistan. Operation Freedom's Sentinel flown in honor of Charles A. Mills and the pilot was Captain Zachary Feba Adkins. And it was flown on the 6th of September, 2018 and it gives his aircraft number. Um, I thought it was pretty cool. I, it also had this inside and I have no idea why, but if I sell it, it'll sell separately. Some signatures, some, some globe trotters. I don't know. Maybe this was presented at that. Maybe it was a silent auction item. I'm not sure. The form is pretty dirty, but it's got some cool instructions for the pilot. Instructions for pilot. Number one, take flag and place it proudly in your jet. Number two, proceed to wreak death and destruction upon the enemy. Number three, fill out this form and attach to flag. Number, did I say number four? That was number three. Number four, return the flag to the scheduling slash ADO office in the gray metal cabinet. And number five, play, place on the shelf labeled place flown flags here. <laughs> well, that was kind of cool. Who knows what substance that is? Somebody looks like somebody ate a hamburger on it. Oh boy, yay, 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 that's it. This is a long one, so I'm definitely not gonna start in on my second Dallas Benz haul. I'll do that for the future. And I got a lot more than I thought. I only paid $35 for all of this stuff. I'm still baffled by that. And I got a Super Grover t-shirt. So have a great day, just keep listing. like kindergarten. You should like kindergarten. We like kindergarten.